Okay, so next up on lucky last for the workshops for today and before we all skip off to lunch off for quick fire, sorry, my mistake, is we've got Zena. Hi Zena, you made it. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. So this is Zena Cordery. She's um, the Educational Technologies Lecturer and XR Researcher from Edith Cowan Uni and she's going to be talking about 360 VR creation by lecturers and students using the tool creator. So Zena, over to you. Oh, thank you. Okay, so if I start getting wobbly in my audio or anything like that, somebody just sing out. Okay, so can everybody see these, um, my Google slide with my little bitmoji and stuff going on? Is yes, all we're good? All yeah, all good. Beautiful. All right, cool. I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, yeah, okay. I've got the chat up as well. I've got my two screens happening, so it's all good. All right, cool. Okay, so hi everybody. It's been so amazing to hear all the really awesome things going on um, around Australia at universities. Um, there's little pockets of us chipping away at this stuff and it's just so exciting to be, you know, a part of something um, really at its infancy. Um, yeah, I was too young for the first internet uh, sort of wave, um, but now I'm wiser and older and I can be part of this awesomeness. So just like us. All right. So um, essentially today um, we've seen some really great examples of creating content and that sort of thing. But one thing I try to do, because um, just a little bit about me, is I work at Edith Cowan University and I work within our uh, secondary program. And essentially I teach all of our pre-service teachers in this, who are going to be secondary teachers how to integrate technology into their teaching. And I also run the digital technologies um, specialisation. So that's for the people who want to go into schools to teach the digital technologies curriculum because it's one of our curriculums now. So I'm all about what is free, what is easy for teachers to use, what is easy for students to use. Um, you know, there's minimum to no buy-in for money and all these sort of things because, you know, we're dealing with schools that have very, you know, tight budgets, especially when you're getting into the lower X year schools. So it's really great to be able to give teachers options. Look, this is a free version and it's pretty good. But you know what, there's also a paid for version and if your school can afford it, that's really awesome as well. Um, so... Um, Am I still coming through okay? Because my thing keeps flashing up to say I've got bad network. Am I choppy or anything? Um, no, I, you're, you're All fine good? for me. Yep. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Okay. So the point of today's little you know, quick 20 minutes, and I'm going to quickly put my timer on as well, um, is to say that, look, this is a free option, which we've seen some paid for options earlier as well. And it's a really great and simple way for people like lecturers to get into creating content and also for students to start making content as well. So that's where Tour Creator sort of has come in. Um, and I thought, you know, people could benefit from it. So that's just a little bit about what we're doing. All right, but what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm just going to breeze through. Oh, and as a quick FYI, I've uploaded the PDF of these slides in the files section in Teams. So if you want to take a copy of this, you're most welcome to. You can get it now. You'll be following along. Um, it's got all the instructions as to what we're going to do. And I know I've only got 20 minutes, so it's going to be a baptism by fire with how to use to a creator. But first of all, I just really wanted to you know, all of us, because we're all coming at this from different skill levels. And I think it's good at some point just to try and consolidate what you know about this stuff, what you don't know about this stuff. So, you know, forever the teacher. But anyway, so um, virtual reality, essentially, as we've been seeing, it's where we've got this computer generated content. It's, you know, um, put inside a, an experience or a, a movie or a game or, or whatever the experience is that you're having. And essentially the big thing with VR, you know, sort of strictly speaking, is that that becomes your reality. Okay, so you're cut off from the world um, and that becomes, you know, your experience, you're immersed within the world and, and all the experience and those sorts of things. We can add in additional things like haptic feedback these days. So it's things like um, special gloves that you can wear. Um, to give you that sensation of, you know, pushing or pulling or resistance, and which is especially effective, obviously, like in the bottom right graphic of um, trying to practice surgery, for example, in VR. So there's lots of opportunities that we can use VR for, for many different contexts, as we've been seeing. So the other R is augmented reality. So, and that's sort of 
basically using the environment that we've got and augmenting it. So we're value adding to it, we're enhancing it somehow. And what we're doing and how we're enhancing it is with digital content, all right? So it's created in a computer somewhere and then it's been attached to that environment somehow um, and it's, it's giving us more information, it's giving us instructions like the bottom right where it's showing you um, where to go. It's an airport scenario, as we know, especially European airports are massive and you can get lost really quickly. Um, so, you know, really useful to have something like that. And the top one has got to do with, you know, fixing machinery. So in enterprise, you know, this stuff is, already exists around the world. Um, you know, companies are using AR technology to send technicians out, you know, to and they know that they'll get it right because the AR is there to tell them what to do and what to screws to turn and all those sorts of things. So it's really allowing us just to enhance our environment and have the best experience with our environment, which is really great. And we've got this other R sort of somewhere in the middle there. It's the mixed reality R. And essentially that is somewhere in between virtual reality and augmented reality. So we are tending to use headsets and you know people have mentioned the Microsoft HoloLens and there's a whole plethora of other kind of headsets who do the same thing where you put the headset on, but it has cameras on the front. And so you can see the world that you, you're in, but it's, it's, it's like augmented reality, it's adding stuff to it. Um, and so you can see an example there with the virtual surgery <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's a, a headset that's been worn by the surgeon and what's overlaid there are scans of the person's um, head. So there's like uh, CT scans, MRI scans, X-ray scans, all this data can be put into the experience um, and the uh, surgeon can see exactly what's going on, exactly where the tumour is. It's like right there. Um, so you can have that sense of depth and all those sorts of things. So that's really a quick refresh as to what the R's are, these new realities are, these new technologies. So really broadly speaking, you know, educational benefits, obviously, you know, from a, you know, teaching and learning perspective, you know, we can take virtual field trips. It's great for language immersion, skills training, architecture and design. And as we've, you know, discussed previously also, you know, distance and online learning. And augmented reality, it's about understanding complex tasks and abstract concepts. It's great for student engagement and collaboration. You know, students are sharing iPads to learn and discover together, which is really important and developing those great soft skills that we need people to have. Um, and nine times out of 10, they have the tech in their pocket already. They've got the smartphones, they have access to tablets already. Um, yeah, so it just helps to make everything much more accessible. And just a really quick brief overview, like I said, you can look at this in more detail than you need PDF on, in the file section. But, you know, there's a whole range of different types of headsets for VR specifically. You've got more high-end ones where you focus um, on, you know, using a computer and it's plugged in. And so you're tethered to have that experience and those sorts of things. And there's also the console um, VR. So um, PlayStation has a, a headset and I think they've just recently bought a new one out as well. So those require something to be plugged in and, you know, you're more stationary. Then you've got the other sort of more low end ones, which is, you know, we've mentioned the Google Cardboard, which is fantastic because you just download the app onto your phone. You have it then popped into the Google Cardboard, pop it on your face. And obviously it's not something you're going to be keeping on your face for a long period of time, um, but it's something you're going to jump in and out of. And so that's why these kind of low end, low tech kind of things, solutions are actually really great for the classroom, be it, you know, K to 12 or, you know, in the tertiary classroom as well. And then you've got sort of a bit more fancy ones um, that are plastic and possibly a little bit more durable as well. Um, and then for AR, like I said, you've got the stuff in your pocket, you know, um, so whip it out and put an AR app on there. So like with any new technology and these sorts of things, is the language around it is constantly evolving. And so there's, you know, not a, a single language on yet, but it's definitely evolving and things are starting to solidify, which is really nice. So we can all start speaking the same language. But all the way back in 1994, um, you know, Mission and, and um, Milgram came up with this thing that they have coined as the um, reality virtuality continuum. And so to try and make sense of it, I put in some pictures there to sort of say, well, this is the reality end of the spectrum. And then obviously you've got this more hybrid of just enhancing the world around us, which is reality and then mixed realities where you've got the headset, but you can still see the environment. And typically virtuality where you're cut from the environment around you. And so now 
now we've tended to come up with a sort of collective term called extended reality, which we've already mentioned, but it's a collective term. So it's XR because X is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so extended reality. So it's about all these technologies are extending our reality. So that's the language around these sorts of things. And hopefully that solidified a, a bit of what this stuff is for some people. Now, there's lots of apps we can use in education. Um, you know, lots of free stuff. I like the SBS VR app if you're into, you know, your humanities and that sort of thing. There's some really great content put out there by SBS. Um, the Discovery VR app is out there in the App Store as well. Labster was mentioned yesterday, and that's just one of the most, most amazing um, virtual reality and simulation um Developments that have come, I've been following them since they first started, um, you know, however many years ago now, and it's just been an amazing journey for them. So there's lots of 360 content, so 360 content being 360 pictures and 360 videos taken with a 360 camera. Um, there's lots of sites for that. Um, YouTube has a virtual reality channel as well, so you can have a look at lots of content that's up there too. All right, but let's get on to what we're here for. So we're going to be using a product called Tour Creator. So essentially what Tour Creator is, is kind of similar to what we saw a little bit earlier, where you've got a 360 image um, and you, you're overlaying information. So you can choose to use your own images um, if you want to take them with a 360 camera. Um, and there's also apps you can get on your mobile as well. Um, and then you can add content to those scenes as well. So you can add your own narrations and that sort of thing. If you don't have your own content, you can use um, Google's 360 images and Street View as well, especially if you're trying to find content of a physical place in the world, which is really great. So it's really perfect for virtual tours and virtual um, expeditions and, and those sorts of things, because we can't travel at the moment. So why not make a 360 tour of something in the world that relates to your content that you need to teach in? So like I said, you can um, make your own. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of different types of 360 cameras available on the market these days. Um, so yeah, you just need to obviously do your homework and see what works for you and what purpose you're trying to achieve. And But you know, if you're interested in just starting, you can just start with something like the Google Cardboard Camera app, which is free in the app stores as well, and allows you to take an almost 360 degree picture. It's just like a really, really big panorama, which you'll see in my scene soon. Um, and then, yeah, you can use that um, as some content. You can also view it in another Google product called um, Google Expeditions, which I won't go into, but hopefully maybe I can do a presentation another time on it. Um, and so then you can push that content out to your students, obviously, and you can obviously also share a URL. So to get us started, um, I will post this link in the chat. Let me see if this works. Okay, I've put the link in the chat, um, or obviously it's embedded in the um, PDF if you've already downloaded it. So have a look at that. I'll give you two couple minutes while I'm talking. You can have a look through it. But essentially, I just created this just as a really quick super demo. And you know, most of you are on the East Coast, so you might benefit from seeing some things happening here in Perth. Um, but essentially, if you're hopefully into it by now, if you have any problems, somebody let me know. Um, but essentially, the first and the last scene of this um, expedition that I created, this um, Google tour, uh, was existing uh, 360 images that I found on the internet. So I didn't create the first and the last scene image. I did add in the overlays um, and narration and those sorts of things and uh, the text, uh, that sort of stuff. Some of it I just ripped off the internet just to make something. Um, the second scene I take that and that why I put the 360 inverted commas is, oh, thank you. Yes, Araluen is amazing. They're like well famous for the tulips. Um, so, yeah, so the 360 I put it in inverted commas because if you kind of look up, you will see that it's black. And if you look down, it's black as well. So, I don't know, it's probably like 270 degrees, something like that. But that's just using the Google Cardboard Camera app. And so, still, the resolution is really great. It's not, it's not amazing, it's not, you know, 4K or something, you know, massively huge. But it's a really quick and easy way just to capture some content. So perfect for students if you're getting students to create some of this 360 content for assessments or for whatever purposes because it doesn't cost them anything because we know our students can't afford um, much. 
especially these days if they've lost jobs and those sorts of things. And it's really great because I've added in some additional content and some still images that I took with my phone as well to that second scene. Alrighty, so All right. we're going to get on with, yep, go ahead. Did you have a question? No? I've got a scene Sorry, did you have a question? I did, no, did that's come it. through very well. It, it's no? your five, five minute warning. Oh, it's my five minute warning. Okay, cool. All right, so really, really quickly, um, let's have a look. So that's the URL to get you into um, to a creator. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just, I've got, hopefully you can see both my screens now. Okay. All right. So what we've got here is, so that's my original one, my Perth one there. So if you want to start a new tour, you can hit the new tour, but there are some really great templates just to get you just at this, you know, early stage of you getting started. You can sort of see some already that exist and what the possibilities are. And there's some pretty cool ones there just to have a look at anyway. And you can actually use this content in your teaching too. So, but what I will do, and again, like I said, download that file. Um, you can uh, have a look at it later. So all the instructions are there. So you've got to start with, you've got to give it a, a, a name and then you've got to give it a description and a category. You've got to upload an image and let's find something. Let's do the eight learning area something really quickly. All right. And then we can start adding in, for example, so you have a have a go at this in your own time, for example. So I'm going to go to my ECU campus in June LARP, because that's always a tricky word to spell. But a really great location nonetheless. Okay. Come on, let's load. Okay, so they've got like lots of somebody's gone around the campus and taken some 360 pictures, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a nice scene down there at the lake, for example. So I'm going to add a scene and I'm going to give it the name for that section. And then here is where you can add in some additional things. So you can add in some ambient audio. So that's where you can put in some background music if you want to have something that will enhance the um, the scene, for example, um, outside birds chirping, that sort of thing. Or you can have some nice relaxing music playing. Or if it's, you know, a bit more of a chaotic scene, you can have some chaotic music. You can add in a narration as well. So you can record yourself saying something. And I just get my phone and I record, you know, a bit of a narration on my phone and then I send it to my computer and you can upload the file. It has to be MP3, so just to note that. And here's where you can put in some additional information about um, is the centerpiece of the campus. And you can put in more information. I can't spell, that's fine. And you're gonna add in a point of interest, for example. So if you click here, there's your little point of interest and you can give it a description. So that's the fountain. And then additionally, I can add a particular image um, onto it, um, which will sort of pop up and, and uh, you know, you can sort of see something bigger. Um, or you can additionally add in a particular narration just for that particular spot as well. So it's really, really powerful. I've seen some that have, I've seen one in particular that's toured around um, Uluru and you go on this journey and there's all these dots everywhere and you click on it and then the audio comes up and you hear a story and that sort of thing. So the applications for this stuff is just literally limited um, by your um, imagination. And, you know, great for us to be creating content, you know, as educators and that sort of thing, but really wonderful for students to be able to um, create content too. Um, I think that's really fantastic. So if you wanted to upload your own, obviously you go to upload and then select your image and it needs to be one of the below um, file formats. So, and when you're ready, you go up to publish, for example, and then you choose if you want it to be public or unlisted. Mine was unlisted and that's how you sort of keep it private. And then you can give um, people the URL for it. So I'm going to hit publish and then you would copy the link and then that's you then um, distribute the link. So you can view uh, the tour from here as well, just to sort of see what it will look like. Obviously, mine's really, really, really basic, but you get, you know, the idea from my my Perth one. And when you go into Polly, there's heaps of others you can have a look around 
um, you know, that people have put together. So there's my scene and I turn around and there's my point of interest and there's my information that's come up. So essentially that to a creator, um, it's obviously that was really quick and dirty. So, you know, but you've got the slides, you can have a look through and um, see, uh, you know, have a go at it yourself on the weekend and that sort of thing. There's um, how many more minutes, how much time have I got left? I think there's yeah. a few, One few minute. minutes left. <laughs> All right, cool. So there is another product that I talked about, which is called um, Google Expeditions. So you as the lecturer or tutor, you can create your content and then you can add it into your Google Expeditions um, because it is all linked inside your Google account, which is great. So you sign into the Expeditions app and then you can have a look at the tour. So Google Expeditions has lots of pre-made content already and it's a fantastic resource. I'm personally presenting on this um, to schools and teachers, um, but it's really great for university as well, especially because we can't get out there and do field trips and those sorts of things. You can run sessions um, as a teacher. You can guide the sessions or students can use it as a self-learning, um, self-paced um, opportunity as well. So, and, it's, and again, it's Google, it's free. It's in your app store. So that's for another time. Um, I'm always about value adding um, and supercharging my learning experiences. So don't forget when we're creating content like this, we can add in additional things to really make the people feel like they're, they're, they're part of it, that sort of thing. So think about engaging the senses, feeling, hearing, smelling and tasting and those sort of things. That's really, really exciting for kids in school. They love to taste the food of whatever it is that they're seeing and hear, um, you know, music and that sort of thing. So, so it really helps to immerse people in that experience and time and place and those sorts of things. Another thing as educators, we need to be thinking about how we can use our critical thinking skills. So it's not just enough just to put the content out there. I think we need to look at opportunities, especially to use something like Blooms, to really go from, you know, knowledge all the way up to doing synthesis and analysis and those sorts of things. So try and really think about the words that you're using to create your assessments and those sorts of things as well. Um, and all this is in the power uh, in the PDF, and there's some links there, some intro links, and just some points to ponder. And yeah, questions. Okay, I'm going to read the chat, and anybody who has a verbal question is welcome to chime in now. So hopefully that was clear enough for everybody. That was good. Thank you. Cool. Very. Good. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of people who have their hands up as well. So I think yes. Karen okay. will be first. Let's go, Karen. Hello. Hi, Zena. Thanks so much for a wonderful presentation. Okay. Um, lots to learn about. And I just went on and had a look at Google Creator. And there is um, yeah, a template that is of interest to me. And I just was wondering, you had a point to consider about how you integrate that into your um, university's learning management system. So um, yeah. Yeah, I just wondered how that was possible. All right, so it's Thanks. super easy because all you're doing is you are using, so if you're creating the content, um, and, and I mean, I'm using a Mac, just FYI. So um, if you're creating the content to be something that you will use with your students in the classroom, all you need to do is just give them the URL. So like you use the URL to visit my tour, you just disseminate that URL to your students via your LMS, whatever that is, and then they click on it. So okay. it's that easy. So there's okay. no asking IT to buy the software to embed it or anything. It's just literally, and this is why I love it, it's just so simple to use. It's a URL, you do exactly what you did. It doesn't matter how you give them the link, that's how you, yeah, that's how they con, um, consume the content. And same for them, if they're creating content, they submit the URL in the assessment if it's going to be an assessment point. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense and sounds very easy. So, yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. No worries. Good question, though. Yeah. Now, Hugh, had your hand up? Yeah, hi, Zena. Um, how are you just, going? Uh, good, thanks. How are you? Um, yeah, yes. Just to the, the, the last speaker as well, I, I just uh, wanted to add that um, you can actually embed the tour creator. Um, so when you click on share, you can get the link or you can get an embed code, which actually you can put into yeah. Blackboard or your LMS and then use it 
directly in the page, which is nice. But my question to you, Zena, was yeah. I'm actually making five of these and they've got to be due <laughs> in the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, using YouTube video how, or, or, or links out to any other kinds of video, have you got any experience or tips on what to do there? No, but you know what? While we're talking, let's have a go because you know what? <laughs> because mm -hmm. I don't think you can play video per se in it. I don't think you can actually play it. like like the video. It's static images. It's audio. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can upload MP4s. There's not an option for that. So it's it's just static content. But again, if you wanted to have in your description there, so say for example, let me just go back. Um, choose a scene. So say, for example, on one of my points of interest, um, say this one, for example, like yeah. I've got a URL there. So the URL is there and mm. it could just very well be a URL to a YouTube video. So you could have in your description, um, you know, so for example, here, this is the description of the per CBD. So you could say, now go to this YouTube link and then, you know, watch the video and then report back to the class or whatever the instructions are. So you can just embed the URL there. Does that help? Does that uh, yeah, and that becomes a clickable URL. I can't quite see it there, but does that, um, they can actually so, click it in the tool creator? I think so. Mm. Let me check. Um, let me jump out and let's go to view. Alrighty. bigger. Okay. So down here. Oh, there you go. So I put that in the description of that area. So there's the credit mm. there. Okay. So it is a link. So yep. you can actually open it. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. No worries. Good. Cool. Does anyone else have any other questions? There's a couple in the chat as well, but we are yeah. sort of running out of a little bit of time. So if we don't get to those today, Zena, yeah. are you okay to answer those within the channel space? Totally not a problem at all. Creating bunch, yep. So that was Hugh. Uh, link description, rapid, yep. I think I've gone back far enough. Is what I'm missing? Anything else there? I think and if that, anybody else has a question, I, Taryn, does Taryn have a question? Um, Taryn, yeah, Taryn asked asked a question before. Oh, oh, sorry, um, she was, she was just high fiving so. you. Okay. Yeah, sorry, oh, didn't lower my hand. Oh, Apologies. No, that's okay. <laughs> no, good. that's okay. Um, Privacy settings. So, Bill, there was a question about privacy settings, as in specifically, as in privacy settings. So, if I'm creating it and then I'm sharing the link, or uh, I'm not sure because privacy I, settings I mean think a lot. I think Espen answered that one when he said that it's public, unlisted, private. It's pretty much the same as YouTube. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, exactly. Cool. cool. Okay, great. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, anybody else? Any other questions? So yeah, download the PDF. Um, all the instructions are there. There's lots of videos on the internet and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, and think about, you know, can this help you do more authentic assessment? Can this help you create more authentic content? Um, you know, especially because we can't go out into the world at the moment outside of our awesome Australia, because uh, we're doing great. Um, so yeah, maybe you can create some content and help your students have a bit more of an immersive experience. And then you can get the Google Cardboard, so they can put it in the cardboard, they can have that experience you know so yeah cheap low cost that's that's the way to get faculty and heads of schools excited about this you know because they don't want to spend money on stuff that may or may not happen um and may or may not be possible or you know worthwhile or whatever um but if you can prove to them with the low end stuff that the students are really enjoying it um yeah i think the the return on investment appetite for it goes up substantially yeah. No. Yeah. No. That sounds good. Excellent. Thank you very much for presenting. Thank you. No and worries. it was really good to see that. And I actually got to see Western Australia. So yeah, yes. just a, yeah. I've never been there before. Yeah. I've got cousins there. I'm hoping to get there one day. So. But it, yeah. um, it's beautiful at the moment, and it's like the middle of winter. I can't complain. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. So thanks. Th so thanks, Zena, and thank you everybody for coming along to our second day of quick fires.